Hello, I'm Bill McDonough, and I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia, here at the end of September 2011. And I've been invited to speak to you uh, by Dr. Van Deren, and it's a real pleasure and a thrill to do this. I only wish I could be with you instead of here virtually with pixels, but then again, the chance to speak to you is so important. I'm taking this time here uh, and being with my family while I do it. And I think that's actually an important idea. One of the things that I've seen being a business person and advising businesses is annual revenue now exceeds uh, a trillion dollars. And countries such as China, where I've had the opportunity to work with now five ministers and four governors as we chart the course for their circular economy, is that something Michael Braungart once pointed out, struck me, is that NGOs, like the enterprises that we work with all the time, that you are, uh, Powder, and so on, is that NGOs work to make the world a better place, typically, and it's amazing to me how many people in business, and certainly on Wall Street, spend their lives manipulating numbers and metrics during the week which, as we can see, are destroying the planet and the ability of so many children to be creative uh, in a world of abundance. It, they're creating a world of limits and fear. And, and in many times, if you ask some senior Wall Street personality, you know, what is the secret of Wall Street? They will tell you it is the creation of the perception of scarcity where none exists. And you get these feeding frenzies. And for the Dutch, certainly, you can remember the tulip. The perception of scarcity where none exists. So I'd like to talk about that today. I'd like to talk about a world of abundance, of creativity, of hope, of strategies that are hopeful, not tragic. And if I had flown to see you, and I was there now, and, and then I was racing for an airplane at the airport, and Flying home, having felt, you know, that I was useful to you and so on. I would have, of course, put carbon in the atmosphere, been away from my family, put wear and tear on my body, exposed myself to gamma radiation. I mean, all kinds of things that I could have done. But this way, I get to spend time with my children and my wife. And so I thank you for allowing me to do it this way. Because how about business becomes NGO? What if business was an NGO? What if you spent all day working uh, every day during the week and you made the world better and then on the weekend you love your children um, and spend time with them and, and just that simple. So that's what I'm trying to do today and I thank you for allowing me to practice uh, what I hopefully preach. And I'm not trying to be less bad and reduce my CO2 footprint. That would be undefined. Um, I'm then telling you what I'm not. And it's amazing to me how many people in modern society talk about limits to growth and then talk about what they're not. They're trying to be not carbon. And you have all these presentations of reduction of carbon. Well, if all you're doing is reducing something towards zero and that's all you're telling me, then you're telling me what your aspirations are about what you're not. But you haven't told me what you are or what your intentions are other than to be less bad if you see carbon as a bad. And a lot of people see carbon as an energy issue, but it's not. It's a material. And Michael Braungart, my partner, as a chemist, can point this out very clearly. That the carbon is a material. And so our issue is we have material in the wrong place. We have carbon, a material, in the atmosphere. That's a mistake. The fundamental design of the planet showed us that the sun, with its nuclear reactor, thermonuclear, 93 million miles away, eight minutes in wireless, is powering a system that was sequestering carbon from the atmosphere into biota and soil. And we return it to the atmosphere from the soil. And it's backwards. And so the system is tragic. 